welcome to Interview with a Human. This is episode two. Today we're going to interview the movie mogul known as Christian Gavez. Uh, first off, for those who are wondering, uh, I do the intro on a different instrument every single time. And uh, I, I do the guitar part and speaking at the same time, so that's why you heard me taking breaths. Anyways, this is the second episode of Interview with a Human. And like I said in the intro, we have Christian Galvez over here. Hello, Christian. How are you doing? Hi, Shane. How are you? I'm pretty good. You know, in the dark here, it's pretty fun. Um, things are better in the dark, I've heard. It's true. I'm you feel here. more. I'm here with you, here in the, yeah. in the dark. You want to feel me? Ooh. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, first off. Well, first off, I'd like to say thank you for having me. Hey, no problem. I'm, I'm glad that we reconnected after so long. It's Yeah, it's been a while. We, we were... Uh, we first met each other in the bright age of kindergarten. That's not an age, but a class. It's long ass time. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very long time. That's got to be like fifty years ago, probably. Yeah, <laughs> roughly. We'll say about that. Much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Christian, so uh, you were born. Indeed, I was. Yeah, you were. It was a, it was a bright, it was no, it was a very dark evening, I believe. I oh, know. really? <laughs> Let me move the, the microphone ever so closely. Ooh, did you hear all that? Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Look at the waveform. <laughs> um, so you were born, right? Yes. And uh, in a dark evening, you said. Right, right, yeah. How, how, what, what year, what day, what, what, uh, what seconds? I was born June 1st, 1998. Mm. I don't remember the time, but I do remember that it was like, I think it was raining. Or, or, or either that or it started raining after I was born. And like, like on the way to the house, apparently. Like, like this is... How I know this, my mom and dad, they had an old video camera, and I we went one day, I don't remember a long time ago, we went and rewatched that video. And I remember it because of, because uh, I have a really good affiliate, like, a niche for cars and automotives, and, like, the thing that sticks out the most is my mom uh, carrying me out of uh, our white Mercedes and my dad shooting it from the driveway, like, there oh, we look! Go. <laughs> we were home. We're home. <laughs> you're you're really into cars. I've noticed I, that. I, I, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm into vehicles. I'm into movies. I, you, why did I call it vehicles? What's wrong with me? I'm into vehicles mm -hmm. and, and movies. So and so vehicles Christian, and vehicle success. We're going to start at the beginning of your life because All we've right. started at your birth. So we're going to continue from there. All right. Cool. Um, when we actually let's go into kindergarten. When we first met you, do you remember anything from kindergarten in your life? Not necessarily. Um, kindergarten. Let me think. Uh, it's a little, it's a little hazy. Yeah. I remember pre-K very much, mm. and then first grade, uh, I remember slightly. <laughs> <laughs> third grade, is, the second, yeah. second and third grade is the is the stuff that I remember the most yeah. about uh, in elementary school. All but, those drugs uh, you took in kindergarten really affected you. Kindergarten, <laughs> um. kindergarten was a good time. I remember, I believe we were in. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was a classroom that technically was part of a hallway. You kind you of remember yeah. on the second floor of the wait in kindergarten. Yeah, kindergarten. We were, I I thought we were on the first floor, in the bottom right next to the were yeah. We? yeah, and we're right next to the bathroom. yes near the bathrooms yeah. on the first floor, and you'd go through right near the stairs where the, yeah uh, we went to Kennel Lakes Elementary yes. for anybody who ever went to Kennel Lakes Elementary yeah uh, great school well we had mm -hmm. two teachers we had two elementary school teachers because yes. one of them I think her name was Miss Lebo retired. Yes. Halfway into the year, and then mm -hmm, our Spanish mm -hmm. teacher took over. I'm pretty yes, sure. Yes, yes, I remember we were learning Spanish too at the same time. In yeah, the kindergarten. and then we had right, right, yeah, right. that was that was pretty. It was right by the bathrooms, and what's funny is that in that I, I stayed in elementary school all the way up I think to fifth grade, like before. Uh, no, 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 I went all the way through with it. Yeah. Congratulations. And it was oh, I think we both did that right. Yeah, well, <laughs> and uh, I think for the first three grade years my classes stayed in the same area really like pre like kindergarten was that like little room over here mm -hmm. like this i'm making like squares yeah he's hands. making squares with his and hands, then over like. here was miss best no no man yeah miss this old i forget her name she was an elderly uh rest in peace her woman of color i'm sure she's dead i don't think she is no rest in peace her if she is then she is hey. rest in peace hey <laughs> but we we're here <laughs> this is another classroom third grade was like here and then it was no second grade was here and then it was moved 
over to another building. For the people, fuck who, if I remember. <laughs> for the people who aren't in this it's room at this important. moment, which is everyone else, Christian made a lot of hand signs. I made a diagram. He made I a diagram. Vividly, of the school. Re- I vividly remember that section of the school. So Christian, shit. Anything, anything in elementary school? Like any funny stories? Any like crazy things happen in just elementary school? Uh. I was a spryly motherfucker. Mm. <laughs> I, so a lot of the things that I did, I don't know if they either they caught people off guard or okay. they didn't. I'm pretty sure that that was the case in most cases. Um, I don't quite remember a lot from elementary school. I remember that I believe I kissed ass a lot to the teachers, but not purposely. Okay. Like a lot of the kids would be like, "Why are you so nice to this teacher?" I'm like, "I don't fucking know." <laughs> I never had a straight answer. Did um? I remember this one time we were, uh... and I just lost the story. There we go. <laughs> that, uh, that's that one right there. It was. Uh, I, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. That story. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Oh here we go. It's back. Guys. Okay. We. I had a very good relationship with a librarian. Do you remember her? Ooh. Christian, she, Christian at the young um, at the young age had a great relationship with the librarian. Mm. Dude, are you making this sexual? No, mm. this is not the case. I was like five. <laughs> it's never you're never too young to start. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, no, no. Hit on your librarians as in when you're five. <laughs> That's the lesson for today. I don't believe. Ha oh, man, I'm trying to remember her name, but I know that. Which is really funny, because we hadn't seen each other since elementary school, and then all of a sudden I enter high school, and she's the librarian at my high school. Really? And then and I'm you like, rekindle, what? did you rekindle your love with her? No. Damn what? it. What love for her? Um, what? We were just good friends. Why? <laughs> we were good friends. Um, no, I get you. Um, so, mm. did you, did you ever, did you ever punch anyone in school? Like, um, in your elementary, middle school, or, or high school? Did you, any fist fights? Well, uh, in elementary school, not so much. Okay. I, I think I maybe want punched, like, one or two people. Ah, oh, there we go. But, like, that was, like, in the shoulder. And I wasn't very strong then, and I, I guess I'm not very strong No, you got, you got the muscles, look at you. I have the swole. He's swole. Um, middle school was a bit of a different animal. Mm, middle school that, was scary. It's that, like... I like to call it that entry period where everybody's like fucking weird and awkward and nobody really knows what's going on mm-hmm. either with, with their lives and nobody really cares about the education at that point. Fair enough. And and I think that's that's a topic of for another day about the American school system. But we'll, <laughs> we'll not get into there we go. politics at this moment in time. There we go. But um so any so any fist fights at all? Uh actually yes. Oh. When, when I was in middle school um, there was this kid, I forget his name, but, uh, he was, uh, fairly larger, um, a little taller than me. Okay. And he was, I guess, I don't know if he was misunderstood or if he was just an asshole, <laughs> but long story short, uh, we have PE together, like okay. physical education. And shout out to PE. Shout out to PE, Big class girl. that most people fuck off at. <laughs> <laughs> Where we can't run that mile, my friend. We've all tried it. We've all been there. That anyway, mile was really hard, yeah. So uh, every day after class, you know, you'd you'd go before before PE, you'd go, you put your stuff in your locker, and then after PE, you'd take them out and you'd change back out into your regular clothes and you continue your day. Mm-hmm. I had PE, I think, right after lunch, and it was uh, what I would do, and I still do this this day, is I would put my entire book bag in the locker. Yeah. Along with my stuff. Yeah, I did that like, also. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave it there on the side like how most of my, mm-hmm. my friends would do. It's just, uh, you Damien, don't want people touching your stuff. You know? And I'm remembering the names now. Damien uh, and, uh, I believe his name was Michael or Eddie. I shout out to Michael or Eddie. I cannot remember Big your, round of your name. Now. It escapes me. But we had three friends, three main friends. And then we had my other friend, Caitlin. Okay. And then we had... Uh, Cassandra, she she was a. Uh, I haven't seen her in a very long time. Rest in peace, Cassandra. She's not dead. Oh, <laughs> damn it! Not I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you I'm never not know. sure. This is a possibility. You never know. She was she's a bit of a crazier child. Yep, there than we the go. Rest of us. So there's a chance of that, and my phone just went off. Oh. So I'm gonna shut it off. Oh man, here we go. Christian okay. being unprofessional. So, so <laughs> going into the story, all right, I I've derailed myself <laughs> long enough. There we go. I tend to do that a lot, where. Okay, so this was the fist fight story. It okay. went something like this. After PE, I came into my locker. 
I went and I noticed that my locker was open. I'm like, oh shit, my locker's open. So I open it up and I don't see my backpack in there. Oh man. I'm like, oh fuck, where'd it go? Someone broke into your locker? Yes, yeah, someone broke into my locker. They got my combination. And then I, I immediately started looking around for it and eventually I did find it. I found it. And, like, it was thrown over this other side of the lockers. Because there was the section of the lockers that were, like... Mm-hmm. Like, they're in rows. Yeah, Rows yeah. and columns, like, like in a store. Mm-hmm. Like, in, like, in a grocery store. But one side of them was, like, blocked off for whatever knows reasons. I don't know. I was thinking it was as, as, asbestos. But I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that is true. I'm pretty sure the reason why they had that section blocked off with desks was to stop the fourth graders from fucking each other or something. I don't know. Oh. I really don't know. Shout out to fourth graders having sex. Yes. Big shout out to... <laughs> that's not... That's not shout that out. Never mind. Um, Reverse shout out. <laughs> withdraw. Completely yeah. withdraw. Um, Quiet in. So yeah, I found it back there. I went and I told the, told the coach. And he's like, all right, uh, let's get you fixed up with a new lock and a new combination. And so we did that. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, half of my clothes were stolen. Okay. From there. So I'm like, okay, well, shit. I lost my clothes, but I do have my backpack with me. So you know what? That's good. Yeah, there we go. Because I would keep multiple shirts and shorts, like gym shirts and shorts, in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, apart from my uniform. So we went, got a locker, great time. And then, uh, not a great time, a new locker. and uh, Not a new locker, a new uh, lock. Sorry. <laughs> went and did that. And then uh, the following day, same thing happened. But, oh, you got a serial. But this time, my backpack was turned inside out. Oh, okay, like, classic, classic, uh, classic middle fuck school. Fuck is this shit? So I used, to, I used to do that to people. And actually. then I figure out. I don't remember how it was that I figured it out. Right, the coach called out the class, mm-hmm. and then a, the kid, like. That he came to me afterwards, and he didn't go to the, he didn't like reveal himself until after after the fact, and then he's like, "I stole your clothes," and I I I don't know. I was a weird kid. I guess I didn't like like this this. It wasn't completely unprovoked because yes, he stole my clothes, and mm-hmm. he was giving me a fucking attitude over it. He was being a real jerk about it. Fair enough. And then, like, that kind of... I don't remember how exactly it went, what he said, but I, I threw the second punch. Ooh, the second punch. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't throw the first punch. Uh, let the record show that it was, it was the second punch? Yeah, yeah, Han did not shoot first. Ooh, there Han, we go. Han, Han did not shoot first. Um, and, uh... Did you, wait, did you say you won the fight, or...? I don't know. Yeah, I, it it kind was of, all blur from it there. Kind of, it kind of, like, I, I kind of blurred out for a little bit. But I know that out at the end of it, I was the one with bloody knuckles and not him. So I don't know if I hit him enough times that it, that I cut my own skin or or I or, or you you really or hit I him. fucked him up a little bit yeah. much. But all I know is that the two of us got pulled apart. Like, the next thing I remember is the two of us getting pulled apart by the coach and him screaming at the both of us like, "What the fuck is wrong with what would you do?" And then from there that. Uh, from there on, you just became just to, known as Christian the Killer, or no, 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 no. Oh. no that kind of stayed within the locker room. No one, they, the two of us kind of made up afterwards. We didn't ever talk again. For, that's that's making then, up, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> my God. Yeah, but I think my mom just gave him. Shout out to my mom. Big round of applause to my mom. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, that, I guess that kind of that's where the story kind of ends. There we go. We 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 didn't make up. I got my I didn't never got my gym shorts back, and. Uh, I feel like the whole fight over this was so stupid. Like, we, I didn't need to... Well, maybe I did. I don't remember. I really you don't... You establish your dominance. I established the dominance as the shortest motherfucker in the school. That... There we go. Literally, I was the shortest kid in the school. I was the smallest kid in the school. And I was the fastest kid in the school. That's I could how run a mile. I could run a mile in 6 minutes and 58 seconds. That's pretty quick. I could, I could run a mile and, like, I can't. There we go. No, no. It was not a mile. It was half a mile. Oh, yeah. half a mile. Okay. No, not half a mile. It was two-fourths of a mile in 6.54. Two-fourths of a mile happens to be half a mile. Who cares? Um, shout out to the math people out there. Mathematics. Radical. Um. So, 
Speaking speaking of fights, because uh, I don't know why fights is a thing for today. You, you brought have, it up. If yeah. there was anything that, <laughs> throughout <laughs> elementary, middle, or high school. So high school. Did you ever fight for like a girl? Fight for like a, a girl. guy. You were fighting with fist another guy. fighting. No, maybe, maybe or just arguing. And like, was there like any like? Because, okay, I see where you're going. Yeah, this. because like in high school for me, uh, I I didn't really talk to actually middle school too. I didn't really talk to him because I was really shy, so I never really even, like, got past the point of arguing with someone over a girl, <laughs> but I've always been, I always find those stories interesting. Did you ever have to fight someone for um, the attention of a female? Yes and no. Oh. Yes and no. Okay. Um, okay. So, in high school, I was a bit of an idiot, like, a thousand percent of an idiot. Um... Thousand percent of an idiot. Yeah. Uh, I. That's a bit of a tough situation, cause I've no stories from high school that I have had, but I don't believe I've ever fought someone over a woman before. I remember this one one time that I got really really jealous over someone. Mm -hmm. But Understood. and I I never I don't I never did anything about it. It was one of those like. I'll angrily watch you over, like, my secret, like, like, uh, the, the neighbor from Home Improvement, I guess. It, yeah. Just, like, uh, that visualization of, like, peeking over the fence, but this time mad. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. What's, what's one of the most ex interesting experiences you've had in your life so far? Interesting experiences. Like. That's, that's a very broad question. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, let me, let me. Um, cause there's, there's so many moments right now that I could tell you that we could be here for, I don't know, a little while longer, a long time, just talk to me telling you stories about this. I can tell you a few of them if you like. Okay, let's start. Okay. What do you think is the most interesting? Um, the most interesting, uh, one the uh, interesting story, at least in my opinion, mm -hmm. is gotta be when, okay, film festival experience class. This was very recent. It was in, recent as in like, the class ended this semester. And that's what you're doing in, in life weeks. Is right now. Is, yeah, right yeah, that's now. That's what you want to do is film. Yeah, yeah. That's my my goal. What my Since high school, and thank you, Juan Moreno, if you're listening. Shout out to Juan Moreno. Much. He was my uh, film professor in high school. And he's the one that really got me into making movies. Like, he, you know... Like, I always kind of had an idea. I saw YouTube when I was younger. The the dawn of YouTube when it first showed up is when I was, like, I was on the internet at that point, And I discovered, and I'm like, oh, this is great. I can make my own things. Cool. And I remember when we were moving from middle school to high school, I'm like, I want to go to Ferguson because they have a film program. I want to make videos. That was my exact wording to my mother. And she's like, all right, fine, we'll, we'll put you there. We'll see what we can do. And I applied for the magnet, got the magnet, and now I'm... And then from there, it went from there. Um, and I started the film program, yada, yada. And ever since then, you know, that's been the case. But now I moved on to... When I moved on to college, I'm, what, two years in now. And at the end of my AA... No, my AS. End of my AS. And I took this class at Film Festival Experience with uh, Augustine. Um, this class is... It's a good class. <laughs> yeah. It gives you a good um, viewpoint on the going-ons in Miami as far as film festivals go. Okay. Where, uh, long story short, you have to do... There's a certain criteria for it. You have to meet... You have to go... There's a thing called... Uh, in Miami, there's like a week of like... Big Miami Film Festivals. It's called the Miami Film Festival. <laughs> That's when they do their do their event, their showings, and they have showings all around Miami. Okay. And so, and he told us that. So we're gonna our our assignments was to go to these films. We gotta had to watch. We had to do ten events. Okay. And most of them were films. We had to go do those films, and then we also had to do the uh, do essays for them which I think I fucked up on like two of them I don't remember we had to do reviews for the movies that we saw for some of them the three of the movies that we saw and we had to network with people mm -hmm. like that that whole class is made for you to network with people for you to go out for you to go 
talk to people, talk to the filmmakers, and do that. <clears throat> basically, just just get your name out there, and and talk to people. That's basically, that's okay. That's advice for life in general. You if you want to get anywhere and you're not finding work, talk become to, a prostitute. Just, just start speaking to oh. people. Get to get to know folks that are in the industry. Become best friends. If you don't have the new Ronin camera. You know, don't don't be a shady person and like, oh, I'm only using you for the camera, but like, make friends with people who have that stuff or have the capabilities to get them, so that way you guys can be friends and make projects together, just like how, I don't, I don't know, me and Shane. We Hello, know I'm we, Shane, by the way. We know each other for a long time, and he's great at music. I'm great at movies, and we're working on something now. Exactly. We we are working mm -hmm. on on films together. So back to the interesting story. Yeah. Really quick, just to, just to wrap it up. Yeah. Because I've been giving too much exposition. Yeah. And not enough. <laughs> what happened? The the people want the the meat. People want the meat. The juicy. And I'm uh, I, I'm not delivering at the You're moment. I ram I am rambling. I'm yeah. very much rambling at the moment. Okay. So. But you have a nice voice. So so people are going to enjoy it. They'll Thank be you. like, ooh. Thank you. I. Mm. I enjoy this voice. Um, I don't know if Christian is single at this moment. But... I am. Oh, he... well. Oh, 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 it's complicated. It's complicated. No, no, no. I, I am. I am taking at the moment. Oh, if sorry, ladies and and but all men, I'm saying, if, if you want all, to, all know. I'm saying is if shit don't go, if <laughs> shit don't go anywhere, man, help. Ayuda me por favor. <laughs> help me, please. <laughs> so, nah, I'm always, I'm always uh, able to hang out. <laughs> even if it's even if it's just to be friends you know? there we go that's equal opportunist and I feel like I'm stabbing myself while I'm saying that <laughs> oh man okay so uh here's the fucking story let me let me rephrase also something uh this podcast is unedited so uh whatever everything's happens, going in yeah whatever happens happens um so <laughs> cut out the last uh <laughs> 30 seconds ever since you mentioned uh girlfriend just just cut that real quick and then we'll ask a question after got it i'll be sure to cut it <laughs> he doesn't cut it does he no, i'm not cutting it <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh film festival experience your job in the class is to network with people okay and so after the, uh, there was two films being shown on the first night of the Miami Film Festival. And this is going to date the podcast. It really is. Well, luckily, it does it on its own when I upload it. Ah, right. It puts a date at the bottom. Right. But I mean for rewatch. Oh, yeah. Re I'm an idiot. is what I Yeah, got. I, might, I try to make a dumb joke. This was uh. the, uh, okay, well, this is the 2018 uh, Miami Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a Monday night or a Tuesday night. One or two. I can't remember which one it was. But... It was at the uh, MDC Tower Theater on 8th Street. Mm -hmm. in, right on Calle Ocho. Right on Calle Ocho. And it was... Uh, the two films were uh, Gladesman. The last uh, Everglades Cowboys. Okay. Uh, you can look them up. Gladesman. It's a, actually a really good documentary on the Everglades. And airboating in the Everglades. And the people you know, going around. Okay. Uh, and when we were there... The people that starred in the movie, because it's a documentary, people starred in the movie were there at the premiere. Oh, that's and cool. I'm like, yo, this is awesome. <laughs> I, I see uh, so and so and so and so. I'm not dropping your names because I don't know if that's okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. But, and then afterwards was another movie called Make uh, Love Great Again, which was a comedy written by, well, I don't know if, um, I think it was, was it Jay? Or was it she? It, it, okay. Uh, I'm not going to mention their names, but they would actually, well, I, I think they'd like the advertising. There we go. Um, Jane Vashir, they wrote, they wrote, directed and produced the project. And so afterwards, after the showing, we went and we, we decided, Hey, let's me and Brian were like, okay, let's, let's talk to these people. We have questions. We shouldn't have them answered. And we went up to them and we were like, Hey, um, I wanted to, we wanted to know how it is, because we're young filmmakers here in Miami, we're in college, we're trying to do our best at the moment to, you know, just get ourselves out there and to know and to, to start lear to learn more and to be able to produce and eventually have our movie up on a stage like this at a premiere, you know, like, like you guys. And the case was, is that they, gave, they gave us some good advice, but they told us. They had, we gave them, we exchanged Instagrams, and then he, one of them told us, 
text us tomorrow on Instagram. And then, and we'll go from there. And so, my brain that's like, okay, this is a test. This is to see if we really mm-hmm. got the cojones. And I did that. And you texted them? I texted them. And then within a couple minutes, all myself, Brian, and our friend Sam that we also like pushed for. Mm-hmm. All of us were in a group chat. And we just started talking with these professionals and started working together with them. And now, hopefully soon, um, I have an internship with them. And we go from there. Like, That's these, awesome. They're, seri- they're pretty serious about their work. They have a, a, a company here in Miami that does commercials. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So I guess that's the most interesting story. Okay. I guess that really that story is, I this is me finally taking the initiative to doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. And actually kind of getting somewhere with it. Exactly. I don't know where this road is going to lead. Mm-hmm. I can only assume good things because I'm kind of a positive person. Exactly. And when- hopefully... I, Hopefully we go somewhere with this and it goes great. Yeah, I've uh, I've had people come up to me just randomly before, uh, mainly at bars because that's where musicians perform. Mm-hmm. Uh, and bars and like uh, event guard shows. Yeah, exactly. And people go up Coffee to you shops. and they're like, "Hey, you're pretty good at something or whatever," and you're like, "Oh, thank you." And it's like, "Hey, uh, here's my card. You should call me sometime." Blah 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 blah. Take those opportunities. Do you ever call them, Shane? Um. Uh, they call me. Actually. They call you. Yeah, no, uh, because I give them my number. Because <laughs> oh, okay, cool. But um, yeah, business cards. Yeah, Go ahead. this this one time though, we were playing at this restaurant, um, and this guy. I wasn't even no, we weren't even playing. We were watching a band, and some guy. I was walking outside and it had a notebook on me. I was texting. I was texting. I was calling my girlfriend at the time, um, and this guy came up to me, and he said, "Do you write?" And I said, I write songs. And he's like, perfect. I want someone to write me a play. And I went, I don't know how to do that (laughs) necessarily, but I'll try. And and I gave him my number. And that resulted in a huge fight (laughs) with my my girlfriend at the time. But I, it's just stuff like that because you never know who those people know. Because even if you, you do, yeah. you take those opportunities because even, like, I don't know how to write a screenplay necessarily, especially at the time. Um, but just giving it a try is better than not doing it at all. Yeah. Because maybe that person knows mm-hmm. a music producer mm-hmm. and they're, from there you do the thing that you actually know how to mm-hmm. do. So whenever life gives you an opportunity to just take it, just take, take it, literally and take roll it, roll with it. And the thing is, it's sometimes it's not that easy that oh someone will come up to you. You have to also be the one to yeah. take the initiative to do it. Say you go watch uh, Greta von von Fleet at Coachella. Ah, that I've... just that just occurred very recently, and I'm I started listening to more and more of the music, and I'm like. Whoa, this guy sounds like fucking Led Zeppelin. <laughs> that's what everyone's saying. I actually haven't heard them yet, but that's what everyone. He that's legit what saying. sounds like it. Like, it's so close. Like, close your eyes. You're listening to him. Interesting. You're listening to to the this Which, Greta Von Fleet. You said right? Yeah, Greta Von Fleet. That's pretty cool. Um, like not that. I mean, they're he's not Led Zeppelin. Okay. Yeah. So let's not get that. Let's not confuse the two. He's not him. And Led he's Zeppelin is even Led Which Zeppelin. Is that a, one? <laughs> it's not a. He's not that, so like, and that shouldn't. That's not an insult. Mm-hmm. Like, he's his own thing. He's writing his own music, mm-hmm. and well, not he. They. They. The band. They're, they're, the band is writing their own music, and their music is really good. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've been enjoying it. I'll have to check them out. Very much. So. For sure. Yeah. Favorite one currently is I think uh, Smoke on Blackwater. Smoke on Blackwater. Or it's Blackwater Smoke. I, Blackwater Smoke. The, I might be dyslexic and mixing up the name. <laughs> I'll that's definitely check that out. Current favorite one. I know it was Black, Black and Smoke were in the name. Okay. Yeah. Christian, let me ask you. Go right ahead. Have you had a near-death experience? Hmm. I think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, yes. Now that I'm thinking more, I'm remembering the trip a little more and more. Okay, let's okay. let's hear this one. Uh, when we said near death experience, it was my trip to New York with my family. Okay, <laughs> it was a, it was a good time. Uh, we went to New York in 2012, right when okay, because like 
there was a whole big scare of like, yeah, oh, the, the world's going to end in 2012. The 2012. <laughs> the oh, no. Oh, my God. And we said, screw it. We're going to New York. We've never been in New York before. Dad was born in New York. We might as well. Yeah, exactly. So we went. It was a good, like, even if the world is going to end, fuck it. We're going to go anyway. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll, we'll might as well be in Times Square when the when the when when it when it floods or when the hail fire comes out. I don't care. Yeah. I don't remember what what the theories were. So I went to New York, and this was my first moment in New York. Like like I gotten out of the airport. We got in, we loaded up in a taxi. I got in the taxi, and we're driving down, and we get to the hotel. We stayed at a Holiday Inn, right about like seven blocks away from Times Square, and. By the way, blocks here in Miami and blocks in New York are completely different. Mm. Like uh, a block in New York is long, but it's short. Like like okay, there we go. Lengthwise, it's long, but widthwise, they're short oh. because of how the buildings are built. Fair enough. In New York, it's old architecture and everything's all packed together. So how, how, where where's the death come in? The death comes in right about now. Okay. Uh, everybody's getting out of the taxi. It's a van taxi, and okay. the door sliding door opens. I take one firm step down, I look up, I look around, I see like a water tower in, on like one of the buildings, and then my dad goes and he pulls me up against the van, like, poof, up against the van, and a taxi cab going at like 40 down the street, right past me, and I'm wow. like, fuck. And, <laughs> and I, look, New York. I, I look at my dad and I'm like, be careful, watch where you're going. <laughs> and I'm like, did I almost die there? What just happened? Wow. I I think it was that I took too wide of a step once I got off, and I ended up in kind of like near the middle of the street, I guess. New York drivers are pretty crazy, though. When My one time in New York, everyone's going at like 500 miles per hour. Mm. It's pretty terrifying. I, I have to contradict that one. I Ooh. believe 100% wholeheartedly that Miami drivers are the worst people in the world. Mm. Mostly because of the Turnpike and the 836. There we go. Shout out to 836 Palmetto. Those highways are the worst things ever built. Why? Because they're not even finished. Yeah. <laughs> they're never finished. They'll never be finished. According to the Miami plan, they will never be finished ever. And shit, like... Wow. <laughs> how do you... How do you build a highway and then... You leave layers of like the road from like old road to new road, like not patched. <laughs> you made you made a ramp essentially, and I'm going at it at like 60 miles an hour. I don't see that coming at night. Mm -hmm. Like I have my headlights turned on, but you know, fuck. I shouldn't need to guesstimate where the pothole is and where the jump is. Fair enough. Yeah. I shouldn't have to guesstimate that, or, or know precisely. At this third quarter of the highway, that's where the construction of this part of it gets really bad. And mm -hmm. I should reduce my speed. Okay. That's not... That shouldn't be the case, but apparently it is. And even when going 55 at the speed limit that they post on the signs, it's bad. It's still bad. You feel every bump on the road, and it's terrible. We're going and to have people to, fuck you. We're going to have to fix these roads then. Christian, let me ask you. Mr. Galvez. Yes, go ahead. What is your goal in life? Current goal in life. Just your old, five years, old, ten years, or until I overall, die. yeah. You're when you before you die, what do you want to get done? Before I die, I want to have made five children. I've wanted. We'll get to that one <laughs> soon. <laughs> I want to have made a a film that I'm very proud of. That it's either you know like it either wins an Oscar or or gets it gets, it gets an award or is recognition mm -hmm. or. or People just like it. Yeah. It's just people just like the movie, and that I also love the movie too. Like, just something I can be proud of is out there, and people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like Reservoir Dogs, where it's always a thought in people's brains when they think about Tarantino. Okay, there we go. I want to have done that at least okay. at some point. So that's one uh, of your goals. And another thing is, I'd like to own a classic car. Okay. That's it's a bit of a smaller goal, but that's something I'd like to exactly. I'd like to, I'd like to own have one and you know drive it around and start a family, you know, have a have a kid or two. I don't know. 
I don't I find someone that'd be willing to do that with me and to there we go. share 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 my experiences and I share hers and you know together we, we build a family we build a life and I think it's very beautiful I'm pretty I, sure I'd I like that, that I'd like to die knowing the question did I love well rather than um, yeah yeah did I love well right or or love enough that's beautiful yeah that's touching yeah. Um, I'm fucking up the quote there. No, no, but it's fine. I, I think, I think yeah. that 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 got to me actually. <laughs> um, Christian, one last thing. What's a question you have? A random question in your head. What's the What's a question you have? Just anything. Just a random question yeah. in my head. Yeah. Um, when's our movie dropping? <laughs> oh, when's our movie dropping? Is when that is, the question? When is, when is our movie dropping? When's our? I when, believe the end of the podcast is coming soon. When's When's our movie dropping? When is our moving dropping? Yes. Thank you for listening. Is that it? Well, that was Mr. Christian Galvez there. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, and and as you can tell, he has a lot of, lot of stories. So we're going to have him back eventually one day. But yeah, you, you could uh, find all these other podcasts on my YouTube. YouTube.com slash with a human. Uh, you could donate through our Patreon at patreon slash sorry patreon.com slash with the human um please help me with this podcast because this is a great a great amount of fun uh i think it's entertaining and i just want to make the world a better place like i've always said and this is uh one step closer to that uh anyways we're going we're going to have a small little mini interview here talking about our upcoming film that we're working on because uh, this is something Christian's very passionate about, something I'm very passionate, passionate, very uh, procrastinate. Yeah, very passionate about. Procrastinate. I think that should be the word. Yeah. Because procrastination and passion. There we go. Um, combination of the two. Yeah. So we're just going to quickly talk about this. Uh, Christian, take it away because you're more uh, involved in the plot. Well, before anything else, I just want to say yes. Go to his Patreon. Subscribe to that YouTube channel because at the end of the day, he's gonna have. He's doing. He's doing this project. He's doing a great job at it, and. Here you'll be able to hear about like what uh, what we're doing in the future, all of these new uh, what Angel Riot might be doing next, or wh- who are these people. It's all about networking, and hey, you might hear someone you know here. Exactly. Thank knows. you, thank you, man. Thank you for that. But I didn't pay him to say that. No, no, he did at all. <laughs> I I felt like you needed a little help there. I appreciate that. Um, as far as our movies are concerned, we're working on like two projects at the moment. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to reveal too much about the plot of the movie yet because True. I don't like I don't like the idea of, of vultures picking. Off. Yeah, especially since it's not even close to it's being finished yet. Not close to finish at all. But uh, it's a long story short. It's a just give you log line of the film. Mm-hmm. Log line of the film. Um, a money troubled band, uh, money troubled rock and roll band. Made it, made it makes a deal with the devil to make their music good. There we go. And that's it. That's it. If you are interested at all in being any uh, part of any of this film, whether it be uh, when we do casting, if you want to be an actor or actress in the film. We're well, looking for actors. We're looking for actresses. We're also looking for uh, people who can vend us a location. Say uh, you've got like a stage. We could. We definitely gonna need a uh, stage. We're gonna need locations, props, the whole shebang, and we want to source that for. Try and get that sourced as, you know, best stuff we can get, for lowest I guess price. There we go. Um, but yeah. Uh, but one more thing that I'm gonna mention. Um, basically, when you see when you see this movie or you hear about it, think this: green room, and. Austin Powers meets the world. I think is that was the name. Of the movie? Uh, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Green Room and Austin Powers come together and make a baby. That's our that's our movie essentially. That's you know to eat, apples to oranges. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Christian, for being on here. Well, and thank you for having me. Yeah. This uh, and next week we'll have someone else. Who knows? Who knows? We'll be next. Stay tuned for episode three and remember Patreon, please. Thank you so much, and everybody, have a great.